Hi guys and welcome back to another practical Rhino CAD tutorial. In today's lesson I'm going to show you how you can use the loft command to create this undulating rippled oval surface to form a component that we can use as the head insert of a signet ring. So without further ado let's get started. First thing we're going to do is define the shape and size of the area that our undulating pattern will fit into. So let's maximize the top view. Then we'll choose ellipse from center command from here. Our center for the ellipse is as ever the center of our world, which is zero comma zero. End of first axis. I want to do this 16 by 12. So my first axis needs to be eight. So I press eight and enter, then left click to say it's my vertical axis. And then the end of my second axis, it needs to be 12, so I type 6, enter, and click. Note that I've got orthographic on at the bottom here. So, next thing is to insert uh, the spines of the peaks and trough of this pattern. So let's just click the shape and use the zoom selected option here. And then I'm going to go to the polyline tool here and choose the start of the polyline as 0, 0, and then we're going to go all the way until we snap to the top per quad or end of the ellipse. So left click enter, so we've got a single line. Okay, so now we're going to use the polar array command to fill the shape with equally spaced lines. So let's go to the transform menu at the top, and then we're going to find array and polar. So it says select objects to array, obviously our straight line, press enter, sense of array, let's just snap to the bottom of the line, which is the center of our ellipse. Number of items, now note that I'm only going to create the surface on a quarter um, of this ellipse so that we don't have to do everything loads of time. So we're being more efficient with our modeling. So um, I just want 10 items approximately to fill this top left quadrant or quarter. So enter because it already says 10, or if it doesn't, just press 10 and enter. Angle to fill, um, it's already set to 90, but if it wasn't, obviously you type in 90 and enter. And then you can see it's given us a preview of 10 items arrayed over a 90 degree arc. So I'm happy with the preview, so I just press enter again. Now the next thing to do is to trim away the excess uh, portion of these lines, which is outside. Of the ellipse. So I'm just going to click the ellipse and then click trim here. And then we're just going to in turn click the outside of our lines. Let's zoom in a bit here until we get to the last one and press enter to finish. So now these are trimmed nice and neatly to fit a quarter of our ellipse. So now we're going to create a sort of skeletal version of our undulating surface by going into the perspective view and holding down shift and selecting the first line and then every other line until we get to near the end. Now with those selected we can turn the points on to make it easy to select them. So points on. And now we can see it's turned on the control points on the ends of every other line. Now we're just concerned with the ones on the outside edge because we want those to move up. So let's hold down shift again, select the control points, okay, then I'm going to turn my gumball on and using the Z um, arrow, the blue one, I'm going to click it once and type in point 0.6 and that will move those endpoints up in the Z axis, so in this case it's the blue arrow up 0.6 millimeter when I press enter. So you can see that if I turn the gumball off now, that they have shot up exactly 0.6 of a millimeter and we're starting to see the beginnings of our undulating surface. So let's press escape to turn the control points off and now create the surface itself. So to do that, we're going to use the loft command and I think we will go on to a new layer. So let's go on to uh, layer two in this instance. And then we're going to go to the surface up here and loft, okay, or we can just type in loft as with any other command, we can just type it in. So select curves to loft, 
So we want to choose these in order, okay? I don't need to hold down shift. So let's start at the bottom and I'm going to click this curve and the following curves in turn, like so. And then when I press enter, you'll see that we get this option box come up and it's giving me a preview of a connected surface between these lines with the style being straight sections. So the surface between these lines is straight. So essentially it's created lots of polygons. Now we can very easily change the way um, these surfaces are created or the behavior um, of the loft by changing the style here in the box. So let's change that from straight and I'll generally use straight or normal. So let's choose normal and see what difference that makes. And you can see here that changes it from straight polygons to a nice undulating pattern. And once we're happy with that, we just press OK, keep it on Do Not Simplify, and we can see our pattern. Now notice that this is pink on one side and purple on the other. That's because I've got my um, back face setting set to pink. So I just want to flip the surface just to make it a bit easier to work out what's going on. So I set the outside surface. So you may not have this, but this is the way that I set my, temp um, my template up. So let's click the surface and type in flip. Okay, now it's straight properly. So the top face is purple and the back face is pink. Now, what we're going to do is mirror this about itself once and then twice to finish it off. But we'll get a bit of an issue here because we've got this nice transitional flow here, but on the quadrant of the quarters, we're going to get a sharp valley. So let me show you what happens. So let's mirror this first. Again, I've got ortho on to, keep, to make this job easy. First in the vertical axis or the y axis, and then we'll do the same again from the center of the world in the x axis. Uh, the x axis, excuse me. So if we turn our curve layer off, the default layer, we can see what we're getting. Now it doesn't look too bad, but if we're being picky, and let's go into Arctic to show this off better, we can see that we've got little peaks here, which are sharp rather than the smooth undulations that we've got running around the edge. So how do we fix that? So what we're going to actually do is go back a few steps. So I'm going to go to control Z on the keyboard or edit undo. So undo, 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 and undo until we get back to before we did the loft. And to correct this, we're going to choose the second two lines in after the horizontal. So these two here, and we're going to mirror them, with the mirror command from 0, 0, across horizontal. Now I'm making sure that you've got copy equals yes selected in the command bar. So we've got two here that are the same as the two on this side. So this is the, the mirror line. And then we'll do the same in the vertical or the y-axis. So select these two to the left of the center line. Mirror from 0, 0, or we could snap it in the line, doesn't matter. And now we can see we've got a bit extra for the pattern to generate. So now when we do that loft command again, we go surface loft and I choose them in order. Same settings are normal. We can see the pattern has gone a little bit further than we need it to. Okay, so if we apply that and then remember to flip this if you need to, if your back face settings are the same as mine, we can use the nine o'clock line and the 12 o'clock line that defined our original quarter or quadrant. And we can use the trim command to trim away the excess. Now, if I turn my default layer off and now mirror these two shapes, you can see that we've got a consistent transition between the quarters. Now it's only a small detail, but it's these extra sort of two or three percent um, improvements on designs and your modeling um, that will just make your models look that little bit more professional. Okay, And also it's good to understand how to um, get the most out of these commands. So with these four, don't forget to join them together. And now all we've got left to do is to make this into a solid object at the moment it's just a surface with a continuous naked edge around the top. So um, we can see here it's purple on this side 
uh, pink on this side showing me that that's a back face. And this in its current state contains no volume, it's not printable. So how do we do that? Well, that's the next step. So I'm going to show you two different methods of making this poly surface solid so that it's printable and ultimately castable. So the first method is we're just going to create a simple flat back on the surface and bridge the wall between the two surfaces. So to do that, let's turn on the original layer to bring back the original curves. Select our ellipse, turn the gumball back on, and we're going to move this down about 0.8 of a millimeter. So let's click the Z axis arrow and type in minus 0 0.8 and press enter. And you can see that's moved down. Then we're going to go to surface extrude curve straight. So simple extrude just on the surface. Make sure that solid equals no in the command bar. And we're going to extrude this up so that it's just a bit higher than the top surface um, of the shape that we made earlier. So you can see here the edge just poking through. Then we're going to use the split command to separate the top half of this surface that we just created from the bottom half. Now let's see if this works. Sometimes um, Rhino doesn't quite like splitting surfaces with edges. So let's see what happens. So split, object to split is obviously the surface, press enter. Cutting object is a poly surface, which is already joined together. And we press enter. And you can see here that the split failed. So this is a common issue on how do we work around it. So the normal go-to method that I'll do is I will turn the edge of the cutting object, so the edge of this object, into a curve. And Ryan would be much happier to split this surface with a curve than an edge. So let's go to Curve from Objects and Duplicate Edge. So select edges to duplicate. Let's just do this on a different layer so it's contrast for you. So we're going to select the four edges here until we get back to where we started. So we have a continuous shape, press Enter. And while they're still selected, I'm going to press join here. So that's closed, uh, they're joined into one closed curve, which is what we require. Now let's try the split operation again. So split, object to split is the surface, enter. Cutting objects is the curve this time. So from so my selection menu, I'm choosing the curve rather than the poly surface. Press enter. And this time you can see that one surface was split into two pieces. So we can separate this part. Now all we need to do is join these two together. Let's join. Let's just turn my gumball off a second. And I'm going to get rid of my curves. So let's just drag a box around and hold down control to deselect the poly surface and press delete. So they're gone. And all we're left to do now is to put a flat back on this and we'll simply do that with the cap command. So click my surface or poly surface rather, type in CAP for cap, enter. And there we've got a nice flat back on the surface, or poly surface rather again. And if we analyze edge tools, show edges, you can see we've got no naked edges. So that is a sound file that we can print from. Okay, so that's the first method. Now the second method is what if I wanted the same undulating pattern on the back rather than it being flat? So let's just edit undo or control Z on the keyboard until we get back to our starting surface. I'm just going to go onto the same layer as this. Turn off my default layer so we lose the curves because you don't need them. And this, if anything, this is actually simpler. We're just going to go to solid, extrude surface, straight. We select our surfaces, press enter. And this time we make sure the solid is yes, which it is. And I want to do a thickness of overall one millimeter. So I'm going to type minus one. Actually, in this case, it will be one to go down. Doesn't really matter which way we go. I'm just type one and enter. And there you can see it's extruded that surface very easily for me to create the same surface on the back as it is on the top. I hope you found this tutorial informative and useful. This would normally form one part of a lesson where as well as creating this rippled insert, we would also create the signet ring that it sits into itself. If you have any questions about this tutorial, pop them in the comments section and I'll try my best to answer them. See you next time.